Hello everybody and welcome to my Afterthoughts video regarding the fantastic movie Rocky. I can't believe it, I finally have seen the first, the original Rocky movie and I have to say I am blown away. I absolutely 100% love this movie. It's probably one of the best movies I have ever seen. Really, really fantastic. So happy. Um, the reason why I love this movie so much is mainly because of the character Rocky. I mean, wonder, what a wonderful character, just amazing. And of course, the story, which all comes back to the writing, of course. Really brilliant writing, if not even close to genius, I have to say. Now, Rocky is definitely a multi-dimensional character, and you know, Unfortunately, we don't see that that often in those newer movies they make nowadays. They just give you a character and they tell you, oh, there's a lot of traffic going on, gee. So in the newer movies, they just give you a character and somehow tell you, well, relate to him or her and sympathize for him and her and go on a journey with him and her without giving you really any substance or any reason why you should follow this character. And I tell you, if I watch a movie and I don't connect with the main character, I turn it off after a while because there's nothing in it for me, you know. But Rocky, boy, oh boy, it's exactly the opposite. I mean, how could you not fall in love with Rocky? It's funny because it almost seemed they used like three quarter of the movie to just establish the character. And then the last quarter was the payoff for the audience and it worked brilliantly, I have to say. I mean, the writing was fantastic. They start out showing Rocky in this underground boxing uh, event, you know, he's uh, beating his opponent to a bloody pulp and it's very brutal and savage, but he does it pretty much after he gets headbutted by the other guy, which is illegal, you know, so he kind of gets back at him. So he comes across as this vicious, brutal boxer. But then after that, the next scene, he goes home. We learn that he's dirt poor. You know, he gets 40 bucks for this fight to begin with. But then he interacts with his animals, you know, with the turtles. And he talks to the turtles, he talks to the fish, and it just shows you a real sensitive side that kind of came unexpected. You know, having this ruthless boxer and then he interacts with those animals. It shows you the sensitive side and how could you not fall in love with Rocky at this point, you know. But there's so much more to come. He goes to the pet shop, interacts with animals again and he shows this interest for this overly shy woman, you know. And that's so endearing to watch it. Then we learn about his... Um, um, other part of his life where he tries to make money working for this loan shark and he's kind of this debt collector and he should break people's thumbs but of course Rocky is way too good um, way too good-hearted he can't break some deadbeats thumb you know because Rocky relates to those guys they don't have any money he doesn't have any money and and of course he is not this brutal guy with no integrity or no conscience, you know. So he lets the guy go, he, he takes as much money as he can. He doesn't even take his jacket, you know. And that tells you a lot about Rocky's character right there, you know. And then Paulie, Paulie, you know. Instead of beating Paulie up because he's an asshole all the time, he accepts him the way he is. He's still friends with him. And again, that tells you a lot about Rocky's character. And then he's, uh, Oh, his date he has. I mean, when he sweet talks Adrian, you know, he talks to the door because she is locked in the room. I mean, how fantastic was that scene? The way he talks to her and being so insecure about it and feeling awkward and the way he played it, just fantastic. And then of course, the entire date and they end up kissing. I mean, who would have expected that? And that scene was just so sweet and so raw and real and sensitive. It was just fantastic. Really loved that scene. And another scene I loved was with this old man, you know, the, the coach. He goes to Rocky's apartment and tries to convince him that he should be his manager, you know. And, and Rocky, 
you know, he's not interested. He's holding a grudge and he would like to throw this old man out, but you know, Rocky is better than that. Rocky, even though he's, he's half a bum, he calls himself that at one point, he doesn't throw the old man out. He lets him talk and, and just hopes that he will leave by himself at one point. And then finally, the old man leaves and Rocky just expresses what he was, you know, he's biting his tongue all the time. And finally the old man is gone and then he starts yelling and screaming in his apartment alone, just expressing all his frustration. And that was one of my favorite scenes. You know, it again, it shows how classy Rocky is to not scream in front of the old man. He waits until he's gone and then he lets it out. And that was just so heartbreaking to, to listen to that. And then he chases after him and they make up, you know, on the streets, they shake hands and, and it's just fantastic. Or Rocky talking to this young girl, trying to give her some advice that she should, uh, you know, take care of her reputation. She doesn't want to establish this reputation as being a whore or whatever. And all the girl does in the end is like, you know, um, screw you, creepo, you know. <laughs> and then endearing again, Rocky walks away and he's talking to himself, talking that, uh, you know, yeah, right, you you creepo, who are you to give anybody advice, you know? And that's just those, those honest moments Rocky has with himself, you know? He knows he's a nobody and, and he knows he's not the smartest guy. He calls himself a half deadbeat and a moron, and, but he still, he makes fun of it because he, he is not hiding who he is, you know? He, he is comfortable with himself and, knowing that he's not the smartest guy he still has a very good attitude in life he's whistling when he's walking to the pet store and stuff like that so really really fantastic and then of course the last scene you know or, or let's say the scene the, uh, the scene the night before the big fight when he sits at adrian's bed or uh, his bed adrian is there and he says that I can't beat him. I can't win against Apollo Creed. Who am I kidding? I'm not even in his league, you know? It really dawns on him and the reality and the truth sets in that he, deep inside his heart, he does not believe that he can actually win, which is, you know, very close to the reality, the way we as the audience perceive it as well, you know? And maybe some people would say, well, no, that's the wrong attitude. You have to believe in yourself. You have to tell yourself that you can win against Apollo, but whoever says that doesn't really understand Rocky, you know, because Rocky is way too honest with himself. And if he, deep in his heart, does not believe that he can actually win, then that's, that's the way it is. And, and he is not shy voicing that, you know. But then again, instead of just going them there and losing the fight, he sets a new goal. A goal that he actually can believe in, and that's going 15 rounds, you know, going the distance, because nobody else has gone the distance, and that becomes his new goal, and he really honestly believe, believes that this could be possible. If he gives it all, it could be possible, and he just wants to stand. When the last bell rings, he wants to stand, and therefore, the first time in his life, he can prove to himself that he is not just a bum from the neighborhood, you know? That's what the movie is really all about. And therefore, this is one of the most important scenes of the entire movie, in my opinion. But then I read on one of those trivia pages that the producers at one point said, yeah, we don't really need to shoot the scene. I don't know if they were running late or something, but they thought this scene is not that important. Let's just leave it out. And Stallone was like, whoa, 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 no, 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 we need that scene. This is one of the most important scenes, you know? And, and then they decided to do it. And I think Stallone did it like in one take and then they moved on, you know? But just the thought that there would be a producer saying that, yeah, we don't really need that scene, just tells me that some of them have no idea about storytelling or psychology or relatability, you know? I mean, how could you pass up that particular scene, you know? Ay, ay, ay. You know, I, I think that there's a piece of Rocky in all of us, 
you know? Or do you think there is any human being on this planet who has never struggled with self-worth? You know, asking yourself, am I good enough? Am I worthy of this? Am I worthy of that? Have I achieved enough in my life? You know, those are questions everybody at one point or another has. Self-doubt and all that stuff. So that's what that scene was all about, self-worth. And, you know, for him, it wasn't really about getting all the glory and proving to everybody else that he's not a bum, even though that's important too, you know, but it was about proving it to himself, you know? And he clearly shows that in the way he reacted after he achieves his goal of going the distance. He's not bragging and say, hey, I'm the best. I, I went 15 rounds with this guy. No, he did not care about that because he went the distance and all he cared about was Adrian. And he was screaming out, Adrian. That was just, man, just so amazing, you know? And I agree with all the people who say, this is not really a boxing film. It's a love story. Yes, absolutely, 100%. It's a love story. But on top of that, it is about self-worth and that was just the, the perfect script and I loved it so much and I can't wait to see the second one and of course there would be also a lot of trivia stuff I read pages after pages interesting stuff you know but you guys probably know it all anyway and I know it too now things like that he wrote it the script in like two or three days and then there were nine extensive rewrites and uh, they offered him 350,000 bucks, but he turned it down because he said, I have to play Rocky, otherwise I'm not gonna give the script. And that was, of course, the best de decision an actor has ever made, you know, that's fantastic. And he tried to sell his dog, you know, and the ending of the script was different before and so on and so on. There's a lot of trivia stuff that is very, very, very interesting. He only had a hundred bucks in his account or whatever, but um, yeah, so that's interesting to know, but my afterthoughts were mainly about the character of Rocky and of course the story. Absolutely loved it. Thanks for watching and I will see you at the next one. Okay, bye bye. Hello everybody and welcome to my afterthoughts video regarding the second Rocky movie, Rocky 2. Man, as you guys already know, we absolutely loved that movie. And I have to say, I mean, I really thought Rocky 1 was already a masterpiece. So I did not think that Rocky 2 would be as good or arguably even better. I mean, I was just blown away. This was fantastic. I loved Rocky 1 and absolutely loved, loved Rocky 2. So I don't even know what I should tell you guys as my afterthoughts, but maybe I just <laughs> tell you why I love that movie so much, you know? It all started with the little recap they had. I thought that was uh, brilliantly done because as a filmmaker, you always have to think, how do you want to set up your audience? How do you want them to feel before the movie even starts, you know? So you have to think about your first shot, you have to think about, you know, the opening scene, and of course you have to think about the music and what kind of mood you want to put the audience in before the movie even starts. And I thought Rocky II having that recap puts you right into that mood again. You are excited, you're touched, you're right back where Rocky I ended. So I thought that was brilliantly done. I loved it. And then, of course, soon thereafter, you already have a great moment at the hospital when Rocky goes to Apollo's room and opens the door, you know, all bandaged up and stuff. And he asks Apollo, you know, did you give me your best? And Apollo, you know, the guy of integrity he is, he is honest and says yes. And I absolutely love that moment. It was such a truthful moment between two men you know there was no audience no journalists they were just by themselves asking an honest question and Apollo he you know he could have lied he could have said no I just took you too lightly you know the stuff that he says later on to promote the fight you know but uh, you know he could he could he could have planted some doubt in Rocky's mind 
by saying, oh, no, no, I didn't give you my best, but he was honest and I absolutely loved that. That was a great establishment of Apollo Creed's character again. So that was great. And then, of course, it goes on, you know, the uh, Rocky proposes to Adrian. That was very cute at the zoo. And then he tries to make money with commercials. And of course, that was a huge disaster. They humiliated him in front of everybody, really felt bad for him. And I was so happy to see when he finally dropped the stuff and walked out. And I was also happy to see that Adrian supported him and, and they walked out. So that was, a, that was a good choice, you know. And then interesting enough, after that, instead of going home and be all depressed about it, Rocky picks up a book and starts improving his reading. And I thought that was such a wonderful moment again, because it establishes Rocky, you know, uh, as this very thoughtful, unique character. I thought that was great establishment again, which of course is great writing and great acting. And then after that, he tries to get jobs and he can't get any job and he ends up at Mickey's um, apartment, you know, the trainer. And he kind of um, ventures the thoughts that he has fighting on his mind. And boy, oh boy, Mickey lands a truth bomb like nobody else can. He tells him that, you know what, your fighting career is over. You're done as a fighter. You don't even see right with your eyes anymore. It's you're done. Oh, and and to, to see Rocky's face when the reality hits, you know, and he realizes, yeah, the old man is probably right, you know, it's like, I'm done. It was heartbreaking for Rocky and for the audience. And it was kind of heartbreaking for Mickey too, to see that, especially when he asked, hey, can I at least work at the boxing gym, you know, and oh yeah, boy, what a tough moment. and. The old man says, you know, well, you, you kind of royalty there, you know, where is your dignity? And that's where it hits, you know, like dignity, you know, it's just uh, he needs the money. He needs to be around the, the, the boxing sports. He, so he accepts the job, you know. And then again, I have to say him working at the boxing gym, he has a great attitude. He is he's all pumped, you know, walks around and and helps people out and he is not too good to work there, you know. He doesn't even mind changing the, the, the spit buckets, you know. He, he, I have to cross the street real quick. There we go. So he's not too good. He, he, he picks up the, the spit buckets, you know. But the old man was right because the respect was slowly fading, you know, and people start making fun of him. And then that newspaper article came out, the Italian chicken, you know, and Rocky, of course, as always, he keeps a good attitude and even says, oh, it's kind of funny, eh? but then he goes into the bathroom alone and you, you can tell how difficult it is to, to be in that situation, to hear people talk to him like, talk to him like that. It's, Again, it's, it's, it's heartbreaking. So, you know, he goes home, he talks to Adrian to see if she maybe would accept that he goes back to fighting. And, oh boy, there is no giving in with her. I mean, she makes him really, really feel guilty, you know, understandably, because she cares about Rocky's health. You know, I 100% understand. But then when Rocky says that line, Adrian, please, don't ask me to stop being a man. Damn. I mean, that might not be a significant line for women watching the movie, but for men, we know what that means and, and we know how that feels. That is brutal to, you know, to, to make a statement like that. Don't ask me to stop being a man. And this, of course, go, you know, plays right into this toxic masculinity bullshit, you know. Um, and I'm not saying that there is no such thing as too much masculinity where, to a point where it could become toxic. You know, I can see that with some world leaders, you know, it, it can happen. But this is far, far, far removed 
from the masculinity that general men have, you know, in general life, you know, and trying to strip that away from men is just ridiculous, you know. I mean, who is going to run into burning buildings and save the people or who is going to war to defend the country when it's needed and who is going to risk their lives to defend women and children and all that stuff or, or build the greatest buildings in the world and, you know, there is something to say about healthy masculinity and, and one should not attack that. That's ridiculous. That's like saying, hey, women, listen up, you know, you should stop being so feminine, you know. I mean, I don't think that would go over well either. So that was a um, very, very interesting moment. And after that, of course, you know, it, it gets even worse because, um, you know, he has to sell his car and he doesn't get another job. He starts working at the meat factory. And then, of course, it gets even worse when Adrian delivers the baby. That's good news, you know. But then she ends up in a coma. And that is probably the lowest point of the character. I mean, his fighting career is over. He can't find a job. He, the wife is in a coma. And it's just brutal, you know, to be in that state of mind. And then, of course, once Adrian wakes up and tells Rocky, there is something you can do for me, win. Oh my God. <laughs> that was just amazing. That's like uh, getting a real huge shot in an arm, a shot of motivation, you know, one of the good shots, you know. That was amazing. And Rocky gets up and then we have this mind blowing training montage. I mean, oh my gosh. How intense was that? It starts with this music and the, him running and exercising. It gets more and more intense and the exercises get more intense and the music gets more intense all the way up when the kids start following him. When they run after Rocky, I couldn't believe it. And more and more kids were joining in and the music was building. I have never seen anything like that. That was just fantastic. I mean, I, I couldn't believe it. They apparently hired about 800 kids to run after him, you know. That was just, my mind was blown there. And then he approaches the stairs. He runs up the stairs and the kids following him. And then when he is on the top and just jumping around, <laughs> all excited and motivated and pumped, you know, the kids around him, how could you as the audience not share that feeling? It was just, it was just out of this world. I, I really thought this was this was amazing. I mean, I was pumped, you know, and then of course it continues, you know, then after that you have this amazing fight. I mean, I was sitting at the edge of my seat. It was so intense going back and forth and back and forth. And then you have the most dramatic ending ever. I mean, they knock each other out, you know, or, or I guess technically speaking, Rocky was um, knocking out Apollo and then also fell because both men were so close to unconsciousness they couldn't even stand anymore so they both end up on the floor and the count starts one two three and it was all about who's getting up first I mean unbelievable and of course Rocky is known to get up always it seems you know so he he manages to get up at the last count and therefore wins the heavyweight championship of the world. I mean, that was, hi, hi, hi. This was just incredible, I have to say. And then, you know, a little detail that one should not forget. There is a shot of Apollo Creed lifting Rocky's arm in celebration, you know, and again, it shows that Apollo Creed is a good guy. He is a good guy and all the, the, the showmanship that he uses, you know, and to talk down to him, whatever, it's just to promote the boxing. It's like Muhammad Ali, you know, promoting the fight. We all know how this works and Apollo did always a great job, you know, so but when it comes down to the truth, you know, he lifts his arm and, and he can respect Rocky for putting up such a big fight. And that was just amazing. And then, of course, you have Rocky um, addressing everybody, thanking God and thanking the trainers and everybody, thanking Apollo and, of course, his wife. And he says, Yo, Adrian! I did it! And she says, I love you. And that is the end of the movie. And Man, how could you not love that movie? Amazing. Really, really, really enjoyed that movie. And I can't wait. 
to watch Rocky 3. I mean, you know, again, I have to say, it can't be as good as the first and the second one. It's almost impossible. So I'm, I'm ready to be a little bit disappointed. But, you know, if those movies, the first one and the second one, are solid tens, even if the movie comes in at the eight, <laughs> you know, most newer movie I watch come in at the three or four. So I, I'm very excited to see it. And I hope you guys are going to be around for that. So see you then. Eh? Okay, thanks for being here. And Rocky 3 is coming. Bye-bye. Hello everybody and welcome to my afterthoughts video regarding the third Rocky movie. Man, did I enjoy that. As you guys know, I loved Rocky 1 and I loved Rocky 2 and I loved Rocky 3. Fantastic stuff. I know that a lot of people say that Rocky 1 and 2 is kind of like one big movie, you know. But I feel that Rocky 1, 2 and 3 is like one big movie. I mean, it continues. They build on each other, you know, and that's why it works so great. And I have to give kudos again to Stallone for writing the screenplay. I mean, this guy really knows what he's doing. He knows about story, he knows about structure, and he knows about the plot points and everything. Really great work. Now, when I talk about structure, you know, I'm talking about the beginning, the middle and the end, or in screenplay terms, it would be the first act, the second act and the third act with two plot points and the midpoint of the story, which is usually the lowest point of the character. So he really knows how to write that very well. So let's take a look at the beginning. Right away, we establish Rocky's life. He is now, of course, heavyweight champion of the world. He's living the good life. He um, is rich and famous. He has had 10 title defenses, which probably takes about five to 10 years. And uh, he has a comfortable life. He even gets honored by the city of Philadelphia. He gets a statue, wonderful. He thinks about retiring and everything is great until Clobber Lang shows up. Now, Clobber Lang, he has been secretly training like a maniac He's, he's, he's hungry, he's dangerous, and he challenges Rocky to a fight. He even tells the world that, hey, Rocky, you're not really a champion anymore. I mean, come on. Everything was kind of rigged to keep Clubber down, you know, and Rocky didn't really have any serious challenges and no real contenders. So he challenges him openly and provokes him to the point where Rocky actually publicly accepts a title fight. Now, let me say something about Clobber, because a lot of people said, I remember, that Clobber is kind of, it's not a real character, kind of a caricature, you know, and I have to, I have to agree with that. He is very one-dimensional. But we also have to keep in mind, the story is not about Clobber Lang. Clobber Lang is just a character who serves a purpose, you know. We don't, we, we are not emotionally involved with Clubber Lang's character. So we don't really need to know why he is so angry, what happened in his childhood, and so on and so on, because we are invested with Rocky and the other characters, not Club Lang. So I think it's not necessary to make him very three-dimensional. I think keeping him the way it was, he is just this formidable um, opponent, a very dangerous man, and that's all we really, really need to know. I, I think, as a screenwriter myself, I think all good. I have no problem with that, the way Club Lang was established. Anyway, so this confrontation there brings us to the first plot point, which is the gateway to the second act. But that scene is right after the celebration, after Rocky receives the statue, he goes home and finds Mickey packing his suitcases and saying that he goes on a permanent vacation. Of course, Rocky is confused, asks him, why are you, are you doing this? And he pushes him so far that Mickey releases another truth bomb. I have to say, Mickey is a great actor and he is probably one of the most honest characters I have ever seen. Love the character. He tells Rocky that, you know what? Your fighting career is over and he admits, and that's the big one, he admits that those 10 title defenses he had, those opponents were hand-picked. You know, I mean, hearing that must be, for Rocky, of course, psychologically speaking, brutal to hear that those opponents were hand-picked to make sure Rocky stays healthy and he, he holds on to the title as long as possible. 
Rocky was completely destroyed, devastated. He couldn't believe it. You know, he sits down and Mickey tells him, look, you just, you got civilized, you know, and uh, you're living the good life. You're not hungry anymore. You don't have it anymore. You can't win against Clover. And Rocky, of course, he doesn't really want to believe that. And he convinces and persuades Mickey to train him one more time for the Clover fight, you know, and even threatens him to tell the world that Mickey hasn't bought any new underwear in 10 years, you know. <laughs> I think that's great. There's just so much humor in those Rocky movies if you're open for it, you know, it's fantastic. So ultimately, Mickey says, yes, okay, let's do it together. And that's the first plot point. And now we're moving to the second act. Act two starts out with a training montage. Once again, great montage. We see Rocky having way too much fun preparing for this fight. He is at the hotel. He, uh, flirts with the fans and it just kind of, you know, takes it way too lightly. He kind of turned into Apollo, you know, who took it way too lightly, didn't really concentrate too much. And then we see Chuck's opposed. We see Clubber Lang training and he trains like an animal. This guy is crazy. He is hungry. He really is a scary character. And then of course we have the knight of the fight, you know, and unfortunately Mickey has a heart attack and they bring him to the locker room. And this is of course a very, a very bad timing for Rocky. He doesn't know what to do. And again, at this point, I have to say it's great riding again, because remember when we saw the, the charity fight they had, Rocky against uh, Hulk Hogan, which was also a lot of fun with some great stunts, I have to say. and. At this event, we also see Mickey actually having a little heart attack, you know, so that's called foreshadowing. So now when Mickey has another heart attack, it doesn't really come out of the blue. It's not like, oh, how convenient. No, it was established that he has a problem with his heart. And like I said, he ends up in the locker room. Rocky doesn't know what to do. He can't fight. And he even asks Adrian, which is a very, it's very nice that he, in the moment of crisis, he turns to Adrian and asks her, what am I supposed to do? You know, and of course, Mickey <laughs> in his way, he, he uh, faces Rocky and tells me, you should be ashamed of yourself. You're a champion. You know exactly what to do. Go and fight. And of course, Rocky goes and fights Clubber. And we all know what happened. It was a brutal fight with brutal sound effects. I mean, Rocky just got destroyed in the second round. Um, knocked out. Brutal, brutal. And then he goes back to the locker room talking to Mickey. Um, it tells him that, yes, everything is over. It was a knockout in the second, uh, second round. And of course, he does not tell him that Rocky was the one being knocked out. And the old man even asks, so we did everything right and Rocky nods, you know, and then Mickey passes on and that, oh my gosh, this was just soul crushing for the audience, for me, for, for Rocky. It was brutal moment seeing this man just breaking down because of his coach who just passed away. It was brutal, brutal scene. And of course, that brings us to the low point of the character, which is the midpoint of the movie. I mean, Rocky has just lost the fight. He has lost the title. He has lost his coach. He has lost his confidence. Rocky is done. You know, it's, it's, it's brutal to, to see him like that, but it really looked like everything was over. The only good thing was Apollo showed up and a friendship started to build. And Apollo told him, look, I know what you're going through. I know how it is, but I can help you win against Clubber. And, you know, Rocky is curious and he agrees and they start training together. But you can clearly see Rocky's heart or Rocky's mind is not in it. It's terrible. Everything is just half-heartedly done. You know, he's working out and it, it doesn't look good. And at least we have some humor by Polly's character. There's a lot of humor in this in this movie, you know, he says stuff like, I don't like those people talking about the black fighters at the gym, you know, and Rocky says, well, maybe they don't like you either. And he's all surprised, why? What did I do to them, you know? <laughs> oh, it's just too funny. Or, or, or Paulie tells Apollo, look, Rocky is not a colored fighter. He doesn't have any rhythm, you know, forget about this exercise. 
or he's being asked, hey, can Rocky swim? And Polly just, with a name like Rock. <laughs> and I guess at this point, I should also mention that Polly is a fantastic character and he is a fantastic actor. So all this, of course, brings us then towards the second plot point, which separates uh, the second act and the third act. And the second plot point is, of course, at the beach. You know, you, you see Apollo and Rocky run at the beach and and Rocky just, he, he gets slower and slower because his mind is not in it and he gets, he even stops running. He just walks away and we all know and he knows it's just over, you know, it's, Apollo even says so, it's over. And that's when Adrian approaches him. Rocky stands there looking over the ocean, completely destroyed, you know, no confidence, nothing. And Adrian engages in this dialogue. I mean, oh, man, hands down, this is my favorite scene. This, this is my favorite scene. I, I hardly cut anything out because the dialogue word by word was so engaging. It was so powerful. I only cut a little bit of that scene. It was so powerful. I mean, Adrian pushes him and, and Rocky says, look, I just don't want it anymore. She pushes more. Well, I don't want to lose what I got. She pushes more all the way to, to the truth, you know, where Rocky even says, Adrian, what are you putting me through? You know, and then she pushes further until then finally says, okay, you want to hear the truth? I'm afraid. The first time in my life, I'm afraid, you know. Do you want to destroy me? You want to break me down? And this is just such a powerful moment. I couldn't believe it. We finally got to the truth. He finally, you know, expo uh, revealed that, that he is afraid. And, and for him, of course, being such a strong man, this, this is, is a no-no to be afraid. And it was heartbreaking to see that. But Adrian, you know, he, she, she built him up again. She told him, look, I'm afraid too. It's okay, you're human. People are afraid, it's normal, you know. And she tells him that he should take on that rematch because of him. Not because of the money, not because of the title, not because of the, of the public or society or the audience, not because of her, for him. You need to fight for yourself to confront that fear. And even if you lose, it doesn't matter that much anymore because you confronted your fear and I know you can live with that. And man, such a powerful speech. And Rocky, Rocky even asks her, how did you get so tough? And she says, I live with a fighter. I mean, this is a fantastic second plot point, which brings us into the third act. The third act again starts with a training montage, but this time this training montage is different. It's much more energetic. It's much more inspirational. I was pumped just watching it. It was just amazing, really amazing. And Adrian was there to cheer him on, you know. And I, I got to say about Adrian, by the way, that her evolution as the character, you know, is amazing. I mean, she is a great actress as well. And that's, I don't think I have said that yet, but uh, she evolved from this ultra shy woman morphed into this classy rich lady you know and she plays it perfectly so that was great that was uh, part of the montage and then of course the montage ends at the beach where um, Apollo and Rocky run against again on the beach and Rocky finally surpasses him and they jump into the water and they embrace each other uh, in triumph and I, I thought that was such a great moment seeing those two strong men embracing each other in triumph and that was the end of the montage really great and then of course the fight happened and we all know how it ended it was a great fight a brutal intense back and forth and clobber lang got beaten the living deep out of him and it was great rocky had this strategy of just tiring this guy out and overwhelm him and that's what he did and ultimately he won by knockout in the third round and we were jumping up and down uh, if not visually at least inside we were jumping up and down it was just awesome and then of course we had the little add-on at the end um, rocky 
owed Apollo a favor and they ended up at the gym where nobody else was around and I guess they decided to fight each other and it was just fun to see those men fighting each other. I mean we wanted to see more but you know that the point was that the friendship was building and that those two are really tight now so that was a great ending. I absolutely loved Rocky 3 and I can't wait to see Rocky 4. Uh, really it's going to be fantastic. I hope you guys will be there for that too and I will see you soon. Bye-bye. Hello everybody and welcome to my Afterthoughts video, this time regarding Rocky IV. Can you believe it or not? Man, another great movie in this franchise. I have to say I have not been disappointed yet. I thought Rocky 1, 2, 3 and 4 were all fantastic. Really enjoyed it. You know, before I started um, Rocky IV, I was thinking what else can, can they do, you know? I mean, how could they create an even bigger and more dangerous opponent than we had in uh, Clubber Lang in Rocky III, you know? I mean, this guy was crazy, you know? This guy was hungry and dangerous and he was mental, you know? How could you top that? And then they introduce us to Ivan Drago or Ivan Draga as the Russians pronounce it and this is just a, a mountain of flesh you know a Russian fighter six foot five tall and um, over 260 pounds and juiced up on steroids and his punching power was 2150 pounds per square inch I mean crazy you know i think even in real life this guy is a champion in uh, karate and has some kind of master degree in chemical engineering and something so pretty freaking amazing so they created this this, this übermensch übermensch you know and and that was the uh, the new opponent and it was great because Apollo of course he wanted to get some of his old glory back and pushed for an ex exhibition fight which then happened and ended so terribly I mean that was just so freaking sad I couldn't believe it wow in the second round he was just destroyed this man took a beating and as we all know ended up dying in Rocky's arms and that was just devastating it was so sad and even sadder the montage afterwards remember when Rocky was in his car driving around and we saw this flashback montage with all those amazing memories like him you know Rocky running with Apollo at the beach and everything I mean if if that doesn't make you cry then I don't know maybe you're not human and this was devastating and at the same time, beautiful, you know, an amazing montage. And then of course we have the first plot point when Rocky accepts a match against Ivan Drago. And he goes home to talk to Adrian, who of course doesn't like it at all, understandable. And we have this dialogue uh, when Adrian stands at the top of the staircase and Rocky was on the bottom and I thought visually speaking that was a very interesting choice because Adrian was standing at the top because she kind of was at the top you know she is happ happily married to to uh, Rocky they had a kid they are very successful they have a house and cars and millions of dollars I mean she was at the top of the world you know and Rocky was at the bottom of the staircase and thinking and feeling that he has nothing you know that that contrast was amazing and then Adrian delivers the most brutal line I have heard so far when she says you can't win I mean that was like a knife right into the heart and in contrast you know if you remember in Rocky 3 when she says win was it Rocky 3 or Rocky 2? II? Rocky 3, I think. Win. That was one of the most inspirational moments, you know. And now it's you can't win. The most brutal, devastating line. And, and it, it crushed Rocky 2, of course. And I remember him saying that, yeah, maybe 
maybe I can't win, you know, maybe all I can do is just take all the punches this guy gives, you know, but in order to defeat me, he has to kill me. And in order to do that, he has to stand in front of me and be willing to die as well. And I don't know if he's ready to do that. I just don't know. And of course now one could think, yeah, it's a little bit extreme, you know, I mean, we're talking about sports here. You don't have to kill each other. Yes, I understand and I agree, but if you really analyze the fighting spirit all the way down, you know, even if you consider war and all that stuff, ultimately you will arrive at that point where it's about life or death, you know, and there's a lot of examples in poker, for example, the same thing. If you put everything you have on one hand, you, you're willing to lose it all. And your opponent, you know, might not be willing to lose it all. They might not willing to put the house and the car and everything onto one card and they might fold and therefore they lose and you win. So it's similar in fighting, you know, when it comes to heart, you, you, you know, if you have a little bit more heart, if you're willing to go all the way, that might be the edge you need to ultimately win. So, and then Rocky leaves and that's where this sad flashback montage happens. And then of course he goes to Russia and he brings along Poli and uh, Apollo's former trainer. And they go to Russia where we have another training montage, which is also very interesting because you could see how those two men train differently. I mean, Ivan Drago had the most sophisticated equipment, you know, the state of the art techniques, and he was training in, in, a, in a nice environment. And Rocky was just out there in the harsh nature. You know, he had to deal with snow and freezing cold weather and all that stuff. And that was very interesting, the juxtaposed uh, footage that they showed. And then after the first montage, he goes back to his cabin and there was Adrian. Wow, what a great moment that was she flew to Russia and I think it was absolutely the right thing to do because Rocky was going to fight anyway if she was there or not and so you know at least what she could do is be there and try to to uh, help him you know psychologically and I think maybe she even saved his life because I could easily see a, a scenario where Rocky is there in the ring and it just gets beaten to a pulp by this Russian guy and then he's all alone in the ring and, and Adrian is not even there. I could see him just give up and let himself be beaten to death, literally, you know. So that was a very good move that Adrian showed up. It gave him new energy, of course, as always, you know. And then we had this kick-ass montage where he really, I mean, puts the pedal to the metal and both men, I mean, the Russian guy and Rocky train like crazy to exhaustion, you know, they really give it all. It was fantastic to see, very inspirational. You see Rocky climbing up the mountain in the snow and then you have the helicopter shot and everything. It was amazing, you know, amazing. And then of course, the fight happens and Rocky walks out. And while Rocky walks out, we have this save the cat moment from Paulie, you know, when he says, if I could unzip myself, I would like to be you, you know? And that was so, such a touching moment. And um, it's called save the cat moment. I mean, screenwriters use that term. It happens or you use it when you have a very unlikable character. You know, if you have a very unlikable character, you kind of risk losing the audience, you know? So you should give your character a uh, save the cat moment, the moment where the character reveals his true feelings, his heart, you know, and shows a vulnerability. And, uh, you know, if you have a, a horrible character, but then he saves the cat secretly, then, you know, you're open for it because there is hope. You can still cheer for that character. And, and that was a very nice uh, save the cat moment. And of course, later when he said, uh, he looked at the Russian, hey, whatever I said before, I want to be you, forget about it, you know, very funny. And that brings me to the coolest moment of the film. I was just blown away by this visual when Ivan Draga came out of the locker room and you have the backlighting and some smoke and you just see his silhouette. I mean, that was just breathtaking. That image, man, was was amazing. And in, in some way, it, it kind of reminded me of 
Trump when he came out at the convention, you know, and love him or hate him, doesn't matter at all. I'm just talking about the images. I mean, check it out, you know. That's pretty amazing, you know, that's, that's what came to my mind. But anyway, so the fight happened and it was a brutal fight. I mean, just the first round alone, Rocky got beaten up something fierce, you know. Second round wasn't much better, but then finally Rocky landed the first pulverizing blow that changed the entire dynamics and the momentum of the fight. Drago was finally hurt on his eye, I think, and it changed everything and it still went back and forth and soon thereafter it was funny because Rocky was like sitting in his corner and the coach said, you see, you heard him, he is human. And on the other side, in the other corner, Drago was sitting down saying, this guy is not human, he's like, iron you know so that comparison was awesome and then of course the fight continues and we all know how it ended it was very very exciting we were jumping up of that up and down it was very um inspirational too and then of course we had this speech where rocky addressed the russian people and i thought that was very interesting and very well done he uh, talked about you know i changed you guys changed so the entire world can change you know and everybody was applauding and cheering and yeah i understand some people might say well it's a little bit too idealistic you know but no i think it's a very important message because we really should um, love and respect all of those other people in other countries as well because it's usually not the people that go that start a war it's the governments, you know, and we definitely have to make a difference between a country's government and the country's people. So I thought it was a really great, great message. And talking about love, I just remember that this movie also ended in I Love You. It was like the first movie, the second movie, and now the, uh, the fourth movie, they all ended with somebody saying I love you. So I thought that was a, a very nice touch, you know. And so now it's um, off to Rocky V. I can't wait. I was wondering again in my mind, what could this be all about? I mean, can we create an even bigger opponent than Ivan Drago? I don't think so. I just hope he's not going to fight some alien or some robot or something. So I'm very curious about Rocky V. And I hope you'll be there too. And we can enjoy it together. Okay, see you soon. Bye bye. Hello everybody and welcome to my afterthoughts video, this time regarding the controversial part number five of the Rocky series. Man, I know a lot of people said, well, you know, it's not going to be so good and uh, maybe you should skip it. So I was fully prepared to be a little bit disappointed, you know, but at the same time, of course, I saw that Stallone wrote the screenplay and I think he's an awesome writer, so there was also hope so i was also optimistic at the same time and as you guys know i ended up liking the movie very very much and i will tell you why and for all the people who didn't like rocky five i will try my best to maybe show you a little bit different perspective of this movie and maybe who knows maybe you end up liking it a little bit more because i think that rocky five deserves to be liked just like all the others. So let's get started. First of all, I think the movie started out very strong. Um, we had this little flashback montage, of course, where we saw Rocky fighting Ivan Drago. So that was exciting. And then we end up in the shower where um, Stallone asks for Adrian. And Adrian shows up and we find Rocky very disturbed. He sits there and he says, to Adrian that he thinks something broke inside and he can't stop his hands from shaking. I mean, oh my gosh, this was a traumatic experience right there. I mean, a few minutes in the movie, I was already emotional because we care about Rocky, right? We love the character. So we're with him and seeing him sitting there on the bench, great acting by the way, sitting there with his shaking hands and he says, I just want to go home, Mick. I mean, that broke my heart right there. That was horrible to see. That shows you the, the state of mind he was in. Calling Adrian Mick, that was just horrible. So I think that was a very strong start. And at this point, I was asking myself, what do people expect now? 
Do they expect Rocky to just climb into the ring and fight the next bigger and stronger opponent, bigger and stronger than Ivan Drago? I mean, I didn't expect that at all. I was actually hoping that Rocky would um, retire because that would have been a, a lot more um, realistic situation and we don't want to see Rocky being damaged, you know? So that was still up in the air. And then we go to the next scene, a next huge twist, completely unexpected and unpredictable, which is, is a good thing, you know, that makes movies great. We learn that Pauly, he gave a power of attorney to Rocky's accountant and that accountant was a crook and all the money was gone. I mean, a brutal situation. The Rocky family lost millions of dollars. They were forced to sell the house and sell the cars and sell the bikes. They had to sell everything. I mean, a devastating scene, unbelievable. And then you see Rocky going through some boxes, you know, and he takes out some old clothes and the old hat and he put it back on. And we're being taken right back to Rocky one where it all began, you know, seeing him in those clothing with that, with that hat, and it was just brutal. Rocky was back to square one, having nothing, you know. So, amazing scene, and then he goes for a walk, walking through the neighborhood, just like back then, you know, and he visits Mickey's old gym, and the gym was very run down, which was kind of sad to see because there was so much history, you know, but then we had this amazing, flashback scene with Rocky and Mickey. I mean, that was just so touching to see those two men having this private moment talking about, you know, Mickey was talking about that the reason why he wanted to stay alive is because of, of you, of you, Rocky, you know, and then he gave him the necklace and everything. And that was such a, a touching scene. And we cannot just forget those scenes, you know, that that was amazing. So. So that was great. And then if that was not bad enough, it gets even worse. Rocky goes to the doctors and he finds out that he has irreversible brain damage. I mean, oh my gosh, you know, could it get any worse? Now Rocky lost his wealth and he lost part of his health and he lost the ability to make money through boxing and he lost his license. I mean, really a brutal situation. and. You know, it's hard not to feel with the character. And I was so hooked at this moment because I wanted to see how it's going to continue from there on. So there was nothing boring about any of those scenes. And I was, I was just thinking, Rocky, psychologically speaking, you know, it's a very difficult situation to be in because, you know, because we had those snake soulless promoters show up and they tried to manipulate Rocky into getting back into the ring and fight again and make a little bit of money, you know? And, and those promoters, I mean, that really exists on this planet. Those people don't care at all, you know? They just want to get you into the ring. You can risk your life and your health and everything, and they want to make money off you. It's, it's a brutal, brutal business, and I thought it was nice to expose that a little bit, you know? So Rocky was in a very difficult situation. Are you gonna do one more fight? Are you gonna risk your life? And the promoters even went so far to bribe the doctors to conceal the medical records, you know? So a very tough situation. And it actually made me think of all those poor people who were put into this terrible situation where their employer pretty much put them in an ultimatum, you know, almost like blackmailed them by saying, hey, either you take this vaccine or you're gonna lose your job. And, you know, for a family man who, who needs to support his family, that's a very tough situation to be in, you know. And you got to ask yourself, is it worth just taking the vaccine and maybe be permanently damaged, you know? Or are you going to give up your job and try to, to survive in a different way? And that's pretty much the situation Rocky was in. And I feel for all those people who are being put in situations like that. So I was very much hooked to see how it was continuing from then. And, and then, of course, Tommy shows up. You know, 
Tommy shows up and Rocky was reborn. And Tommy was very sincere at the beginning. I mean, he had a great pitch. He was talking about not having any family and, and he's passionate about boxing. He knows everything about Rocky and, and he knows that Rocky never gave a, a, got a chance until Apollo came along and he himself never got a chance and he knows that Rocky can make it happen and please give me a shot, you know. And it was very convin convincing and Rocky takes him on and manages him. And I thought that was a very good idea because I thought Rocky opening up the gym again and maybe taking on some boxers and manage them, that is a great way for him to make a living, you know, and still be around the boxing business. So. That was great, and Rocky really started living through the eyes of Tommy. I mean, it was very apparent. Tommy won, Rocky won, and it made him very happy. It was great to see, but at the same time, he started ignoring and neglecting his family, you know, especially his son. His son even asked, hey, dad, can you train me? Uh, and Rocky didn't have time. He had to train Tommy, and, and Rocky did a very good job because he lifted Tommy up to even become a contender, you know? And then it was all about the title fight. And of course, then those snakes, the Duke, the promoter came back into the picture and started giving money to Tommy and a, a new car and an apartment and the woman, you know, he just pretty much bought him off, you know? And that leads us to another amazing scene when they were um, celebrating Christmas, you know? The, Duke and, and Tommy and the whole clan shows up at the house and we have this great scene between Rocky and Tommy uh, and Tommy pretty much tells him, look, I'm, I'm, I'm going to sign with Duke tomorrow because he's going to give me a title shot. And Rocky really tries hard, I mean desperately and passionately tries to convince Tommy, no, don't sign with this Duke, he doesn't care about you, you know, he's going to control you, he's going he's to own you if you sign this contract and he doesn't care about you, he's going to throw you back into the gutters once you're done, you know, you should not sign with him. He tried everything and Tommy didn't want to listen. He just uh, said, look, uh, I'm going to sign with him. You can train me or not. It's my way or the highway. And he drives off. And that was another brutal moment, which leads us to another amazing scene. I tell you, this movie has one great scene after another. So, so Rocky is outside on the street, has a little breakdown, you know, he's like, I don't want this, war uh, this life anymore, very understandably. And, and Adrian comes along, gives him um, a jacket and has this amazing speech again. You know, it really reminded me of Rocky III when she had this iconic speech at the beach, you know, and this time was outside on the street. She tells Rocky, look, when you were in the ring taking all those punches, I was there in the ring with you, you know, and I know how it feels when somebody like Tommy comes along and wins, you know, I understand. But for God's sake, you know, you, you, your son is lost, you know, and Rocky, you're losing your family, she says. And it was just such a heart-wrenching moment to, to, to witness that conversation. And of course, then ultimately they end up hugging and, and Rocky says, yes, I understand. It was, it was just one of those awesome moments or awesome scenes that I will not forget so easily and that makes the movie great you know I still haven't seen anything uh, that is wrong with the movie and then it continues and uh, Tommy of course ultimately fights for the title and he wins and again even though Tommy really betrayed Rocky big time Rocky still cheers for the kid and he still lives his life through him and, and there was one of the greatest visuals that, had, that I have ever seen when, when Tommy on the TV screen, he punches the opponent and, and Rocky punches the punching bag in his living room. I mean, seeing that was just amazing. I mean, you couldn't make it more clear that Rocky invested all his emotions and feelings into this guy and living his own life through, through Tommy, you know, it was amazing. And then, of course, Tommy wins and uh, he accepts the belt and he has his little speech and he talks about the little angel on his shoulder that he would like to thank for making all this happen. And he mentions Duke. 
oh my god i could not believe it that was just another knife right into the heart i mean brutal brutal that's the ultimate betrayal and rocky of course he was completely crushed you know he didn't show it uh, as he never does you know he said ah it's okay it's just ah, don't worry i'm just gonna go out for a beer you know and then he ends up at that bar and then tommy and duke and the whole clan show up again and tommy challenges rocky for a title fight you know and that's where i thought ah maybe that's the reason why a lot of people don't like rocky five because i thought if 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 rocky accepts that title fight and he ends up in the ring with tommy i would hate that too you know i would not like that and i would completely understand you guys saying that you didn't like rocky five because tommy is such a dirtbag he's such a bum he's such a horrible person he does not deserve to be in the same ring with rocky the people's champion you know he does not deserve a title shot that would be just horrible and the promoters don't deserve it they don't deserve having those fighters in the ring risking their lives and make money for them you know i really would have hated if this would have happened but it didn't happen it didn't happen at all because rocky was not interested in any of that so I was still totally with the movie and still wondering why people don't like the movie. And then, um, of course, once um, Tommy knocks out Polly, that was crossing the line. And then um, Rocky had enough and challenges him outside for a street fight. And we saw an exciting fight. And of course, everybody expected a fight in a Rocky movie, including myself, you know. And I think we got this fight. It was a different fight, of course. It was a street fight with no rules. It was very intense, very brutal, going back and forth and back and forth. And ultimately, Rocky beats this bum down. He knocks him out and he wins against him. And that's when I realized, I think I know why some people don't like Rocky V. Because the people expected to feel a certain way at the end of the movie, right? Because there was this, uh, this specific rocky feeling at every movie so far, kind of a, uh, an inspirational achievement, feel good feeling. We had it in Rocky one, in the second one, in the third one, in the fourth one. We always had this great feeling, jumping up and down and Rocky five was different. You know, because in Rocky V, we didn't have this, this inspirational achievement, feel good feeling. We rather had, it felt more like a satisfying revenge feeling, you know, because we all thought, yeah, good for you, Rocky. You knocked this bum out. That's exactly what Tommy deserved, this dirt bag, you know. So it was still a, a, a great feeling, but we weren't jumping up and down because the feeling was different. And I think, that's probably the reason why a lot of people say, oh, it didn't, it wasn't the same. It didn't really fit the Rocky franchise. But just because one expected a certain feeling and that expectation didn't come true, one shouldn't have expectations to begin with, you know. But just because of that, the movie is not good. I completely disagree. This was great. Yes, I agree the feeling was different. It wasn't this inspirational achievement, feel good feeling. It was rather a satisfactory revenge feeling, you know, but I was fine with it because you gotta be open for it. You gotta follow the character's journey no matter where it goes. And I, I don't think anybody can argue that the story wasn't good. I mean, this movie was packed with great scenes, one after another. You, you could laugh, you could cry, you could feel with the character. We even had a great subplot with the kid who had to go to a new school and got bullied, you know, and had to stand up for himself. And there were great dynamics between father and son and great dyna dynamics between Rocky and Tommy and Tommy and the family and Adrian and Rocky. I think it was all there. It was a fantastic journey and I really, really liked it. And I guess now it's off to Rocky VI. And a lot of people agree on that. They say Rocky VI is awesome. So I'm looking very much forward to it. And I hope you'll be there too. So I'll see you soon. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. 
Hello everybody and welcome to my Afterthoughts video this time regarding the last movie of the Rocky franchise, Rocky Balboa or Rocky VI. Oh my gosh, this was just such a great experience. This was an awesome movie. It completely delivered. It was very satisfying to watch it. And uh, I, I really think that all the Rocky fans, which includes myself, we got what we wanted and what we expected, you know. This um, Rocky Balboa movie had everything. It had emotional moments. It had great speeches. It had a kick-ass training montage. We had even some animals in there, you know. And of course, then the desired um, typical ending with the inspirational achievement, feel good feeling in the end. That was just fantastic. I really think that was a, a brilliant ending to this franchise. So the beginning was kind of shocking when we learned right away that Adrian passed on. Oh my God, that was just so sad and completely unexpected. I couldn't believe it. I mean, that was heartbreaking to learn and, and see Rocky sitting there at the gravestone, you know. And then we learned a little bit more about Rocky's life. He seemed pretty lonely, you know, but he had his restaurant. That was great. He opened the restaurant in the honor of his wife and he called it Adrian, you know. So he worked there and uh, mingled with the guests and told old boxing stories. So that was great. And he tried to help uh, a lot of people, you know, the good man he is. He tried to help little Marie and uh, her son steps and uh, he tried to help a spider by giving him free meals and so that was um, very nice to see and and then of course let's talk about the concept i mean the concept was that an older retired boxer comes out of retirement and starts fighting again and i thought that was very clever and not far-fetched at all because you know, just look at Mike Tyson, you know, he's almost 60 years old and in two weeks he's going to be in the ring fighting this uh, Jake Paul guy. And of course I know Jake Paul is not some kind of world champion, I understand, but still the concept is the same that an old retired boxer comes out and steps in the ring again. So I thought that was brilliant writing, not far-fetched at all, and then they used this um, computer animated um, fight to kind of pull the trigger with the people you know like let's uh, let's uh, got the society talking and everybody was interested in seeing that that match up and, and everybody was wondering how oh, really I would like to know how that would look like in reality and then of course everything moved forward from there and I thought that was again very clever by the writer so a uh, thumbs up for Sylvester Stallone. And, and then of course we can talk about some scenes, you know, my favorite scenes. Although like in every other Rocky movie, you just have one great scene after another. I mean, we had a great scene at the courtroom when he applied for uh, a boxing license. Then we had a great scene, Rocky and Pauly at this um, demolished ice rink. And you see those flashbacks that was very touching, you know. And there was a great scene at the dog pound when they um, get punchy, you know, that was a, a great scene. And there was another great scene with Rocky and little Marie in the van or in Las Vegas at the hotel room. So all great scenes. But if I have to pick one or two, it would have to be the first one I would pick would be the one with Rocky and Polly at the meat factory when Rocky talks about you know, sometimes it's difficult to breathe and he still feels that beast inside him and there is still stuff in the basement and then he has this emotional breakdown saying that he never knew that it's that life's supposed to be so hard, you know, and, and that was just heartbreaking to see Rocky standing there in this meat factory having this emotional breakdown and I, I thought it was great that Rocky let himself be so vulnerable in front of Paulie, because Paulie is not exactly the most sensitive guy, you know, but it completely worked. And, and I thought the friendship between those men deepened even more 
in, in this moment. So that was, that was a really, really touching scene. I loved it. And then of course, my favorite scene also was the epic, epic speech Rocky had with his son outside um, the restaurant on the street when Rocky told him, look, life is ugly, you know, and, and nothing hits harder than life. It will hit you and beat you down to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. And it's, it's not about who can hit harder. It's about how much you can get hit and then still move forward. That was just mind blowing. I loved that speech. That was awesome, awesome writing again by St uh, Stallone and great delivery. So that was definitely, that was definitely my favorite scene. And this is a speech I will never forget in my life. It's just so powerful. And I'm sure a lot of people feel like that. And in hard times, they think about that speech, that it's not about how hard you can hit, but it's about how hard you can get hit and still move forward. So that was brilliant. And then of course we had the last fight, you know, between Dixon and Balboa. And that was very exciting, very well done. It was very dramatic, it went back and forth, you know, it was brutal. And they used some creative um, black and white footage and very creative editing. I mean, they really kept this fight going. And also, by the way, that, you know, Dixon broke his hand, I think it was in the second round. I thought that was a very nice touch by the writer again, because you know, the commentator said that Dixon didn't show up in his best shape and then he broke his hand. And that kind of makes this whole thing again a little bit more realistic because now it kind of evens out the fight a little bit. And I thought that was very nicely done to get closer to reality, you know. And then of course we had great moments in this fight when Rocky was getting beaten down and then he had his flashbacks you know he he saw at one point he saw Adrian and then Mick was there and Mick was saying something about get up you know take him on and then Rocky gets up and the music swells and the people applaud it was like this dramatic moment but it really worked it was very inspiring and pumped me up you know and then of course we have the end and uh, we have a split decision and again I think that was a nice choice that um it actually reminded me of Rocky uh, 1, you know, the first one, because it was all about going the distance. And I felt the same way with, with Rocky Balboa. I, I just wanted him to go the distance, you know, and all the people wanted to see him go the distance. It wasn't really about winning, you know, it was about going the distance. And, and I think that was one of the reasons why people loved that uh, Rocky Balboa so much because it reminded us, even if it was subconsciously, you know, it reminded us uh, of the first movie that was so, so awesome. And then, of course, an epic ending, you know, like um, Rocky walks out of the arena or, or is on his way out and, and he turns around and he gets greeted and applauded and cheered on by thousands of fans, you know, and I observed something very interesting. I try to explain. I, I suddenly saw Rocky standing there and I saw him morph into Sylvester Stallone. And Stallone was there kind of being Rocky. So I felt that the character and the person who played the character became one in this moment. And the reason why I say that is, if you know acting, then you know that whatever the actor says in a scene is not really what the real person playing the character says. You know, for example, if 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 uh, Rocky, for example, um, yells at his son. Now, in reality, that's what we see as the audience. We see Rocky yelling at his son, but in reality, Sylvester Stallone, who is playing the character, might actually yell at his father who died a little over 10 years ago. So there's a difference between the person and the character. But in that last moment when Rocky or Stallone stood there in the arena, taking in all the applause from the people, I, I saw Rocky thinking, wow, I did it again. I went the distance. That's amazing. At the same time, I saw Stallone with the same satisfaction on his face, thinking, wow, I did it again. 
I produced Rocky VI and it's gonna be a success. I saw those two people morph together and that was just amazing to see. I really, really loved it. And talking about Stallone, let me mention two moments in regard to his acting because I read on the trivia page that for example, first example, when Rocky was um, screwing in the light bulb and then it was so freaking bright, you know, and, and Rocky said, whoa, yikes, bingo, you know, what's going on? So that was not scripted at all. Those lines were not in the script. I read that everybody was kind of surprised and especially Stallone was surprised how bright this light bulb actually was. But since he is a, such a professional, he just went with it, you know. He didn't break the character for one fraction of a second. He just stayed with it and whatever impulses he felt like, yo, yikes, you know, bingo. And then he just continued the scene and that's how you can recognize a real professional because a lesser actor might have said, oh my God, this is bright. Oh, sorry guys, let's do it again. And it wouldn't be a big deal either because you, you, you know, we always take uh, more than one take usually. So it, it's okay for an actor to stop and then you just start the scene over, you know. But if you're a professional, you go with it. And you, those moments are gold because you can't fake those moments, you know. And, and the second moment is even more amazing, I think, is when, when Rocky talks to little Marie about getting a job at the restaurant and uh, she keeps dancing around the problem. And then Rocky says, you know, you might as well dance with me. I'm not the best dancer, but I'm probably better than the average bear. And he looks into the distance for a second and says, where that came from, I don't know. And he smiles and the scene continues again. This line was not in the script. This was a thought that just entered his mind while doing the scene. And he, being such a professional and a great actor, he uses that and, and delivers the line as if it's part of the scene and continues without breaking the character for one fraction of a second. I have to say again, a lesser actor if you do a scene and some thoughts enter your mind that have nothing to do with the scene, a lot of actors get confused. They might forget the lines. They're being snapped out of the character for a moment and it feels awkward and weird. And often they stop the scene and say, ah, oh, sorry, can we do it again or, or whatever, you know? And it's very understandable because you really have to be comfortable with yourself. You have to know who you are. You have to know what your character wants. You have to know what the scene is all about. And then just be in the moment and whatever happens, happens. And that line just entered his mind and he just said it and even said where that came from, I don't know. And he continues the scene. That is brilliant acting. I have to say, Sylvester Stallone is a brilliant actor. He's a brilliant writer and he's a brilliant director, really. Amazing. So that's that. And then, of course, we had this amazing end. You know, it, it didn't end with the movie. It just continued with the credits. I mean, I couldn't believe it. They, they, they showed all this footage from all those different people running up the stairs and, and jumping up and down and boxing and jumping the rope and uh, dancing and doing push-ups and everything. And that just shows you how much power a movie can have how much you can influence society and the world. You know, it's just amazingly powerful to see that. That's why I had to let it, leave it in, you know, in our reaction because it was just mind blowing. So as you can tell, I really loved um, a Rocky Balboa movie. I, I mean, I love the franchise. I have to say that this Rocky franchise is probably the best thing I have ever seen in my life. It's really fantastic. And because I liked it so much and as promised, I will do a little, um, a little compilation of some boxing footage when I trained, uh, you know, some boxing training that I did. And that I went to my old hard drives and I found some clips and I thought in honor uh, of, of this Rocky franchise, I put a very short little compilation together for you guys. So I'm gonna play that now and then we will see you at the next one, okay? Thanks for being here. Thanks for your support. I see you soon, bye.
gonna, it's gonna kill me one day. Oh, yeah, but it's, God. but it's a good death. Yeah, slow <laughs> death, but slow. it's worth it. Yeah. Let's uh, let's talk to the trainer. How, how's Mike doing? Mike's coming along, man. He a uh, strong kid. He got some power, but uh, he got to work on his boxing more. You know, he's a good puncher, but uh, he kind of crew. So uh, I'm trying to smooth him out, get him relaxed in there, trying to think more, trying to use the jab more instead of just trying to brawl all the time, trying to think in the ring. What about one sentence philosophy about life? Maca Foley, one man struggle to take it easy. That's it. Getting slowly into shape, although Maka always finds a way to push so much that I'm just <laughs> exhausted, man. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> All right. Poo.